I think BC Bike Race for me um, was learning what I was made of in a different way. So while it was very much like a physical race of determination and grit and experience, um, it was also a way for me to just sort of say, this is where I'm at in my life and this is what I'm capable of doing. I was on the Instagram and there's a contest, Riders I Wear. Make a 30 second video on why you deserve an entry. I was like, I think I can do this. This seems like a lightweight lift. I'm pretty good at wheelies. So I said, why should Riders I Wear send me to the BC bike race? I guess I just really, really, really want to. You, you. And did wheelies for 30 seconds and here I am. It all started in 2013 for me when I came here, wanted to do BC Bike Race and had a fantastic time. Beautiful riding, beautiful riding. Came back again. I wanted to share what I've experienced for two years now. And the experience I've gained over the period of time coming over here. I thought I could try and bring a group of guys over, uh, veterans as well, amputee veterans, uh, more importantly too. So I approached the veterans charity that we are members of called BLESMA, which stands for the British Limbless Ex Servicemen's Association. But very late last year, they came up to me and said, yes. So eight years ago, um, I had um, a surgery that uh, didn't go quite as planned and I uh, I left that procedure with um, quite a bit less ability to, to walk. So I left there with some nerve damage in my leg and um, spent the better part of the last eight years really learning how to navigate um, my career, my life, everything sort of all over again. And I was told, you know, it's not gonna get better, but it's not gonna get worse. And I thought, oh God, okay, so there's there's stuff that I can do. Um, I just have to understand what what my limits are um, and how to actually function in um, a healthy lifestyle and, and maybe pushing myself more than I normally would so that I can enjoy things. Um, and what I could do became more important than what I couldn't do. For me, it was about being closer to my brother who unfortunately is passed. And he was a great biker and he was such a great guy. And for me, it was like, you know, I had this little, um, I, it'll, it's on my tag, it's like sponsored by Fearless Freddy, you know? Because I took this little chunk of money that I got from him and called it the Fearless Freddy Fund. And I was like, and I hadn't touched it until I went, BC Bike Race. And it was like the coolest way I thought to honor my brother. I was like, so it's like, I've taken him with me. So if I don't finish the race, it's like we didn't finish the race. You know, I, uh, I started it in September and I said, I'm gonna do the BC bike race. And everybody was like, that's crazy. You can't do that. You can't do that. And I was like, well, now I'm gonna do it. Uh, for me, I, I do a lot of XC racing now. I've come from a road and cyclocross background, but um, the XC is nothing I've ever seen like this. It's been awesome. Like, it's been so awesome. I started this week um, just terrified that I had just chewed off something way too big. I've been to many, many organized stage races in the 25 years I've been cycling. But there's nothing like this anywhere. You know, at the beginning, you're just terrified that you've put yourself way in over your head. And you know what, you have. But then that's part of it is that you have and so have a bunch of other people. And you're all in the same boat and you're gonna have a similar journey that you get each other through and you understand. And it's not, it's, not, it's not all about the pain that you go through when you do this. It's the joy, it's the meeting of the people. Brutal. Mm. I went down twice in the last 5K. My Mexican brother. 
I missed riding with yeah. you today. No, it you was know, too oh, hard. No, I broke my saddle. I see, I see. And then at the end, I went twice down. Oh. I missed a bridge. Oh. And then I oh. went over Superman. Yeah. Check this oh. out. Oh, I see it. Oh my God. Great day. We do it again. Yes. Tomorrow. I wouldn't change it for nothing. Uh, met some new friends. Um, I got some new places to stay in Colorado, in um, Seattle, uh, New Zealand too. Although that guy still can't understand his English. You yeah, know, nah, I'm in some cheese from dairy, eh, bro? Uh, but I'm sure I'll figure it out if I go stay with them for a bit. I'm connected to people I never thought I'd be connected with. Like two elite riders who I never even thought I would be friends with are two people I've absolutely fallen in love with, you know, and who have been taking care of me here at the race, who have been my biggest cheerleaders. To have two elite riders look at you and go, you can do it. Here's what you need to do. The community is what's going to actually bring you between, you know, where you are and right to impossible. People always go, oh, well, you're disabled, and I say, well, no, I, you know, mentally, I tell my disability what I want to do, and I don't live my life to my disability. I, I want to do well, I don't want to, I know it sounds bad, I don't want to be seen as everyone's going, oh, you're doing amazing because you've got one leg. I, I want to be seen as, oh, you're doing really well because you're up there, and show people that although you're an amputee, you can still be quite competitive in the, in the field. I, kn I know what the belt buckle means to me, I remember 2013 coming in across the finish line and having quite a big tear. I had quite a big, I got really emotional, really emotional. Came back in 2015 with a shoulder injury, as I mentioned earlier. Didn't ride two days, didn't get me buckle, gutted. So for me, it means everything. I'm a collector of artifacts, and I think that the representation of those artifacts in my life um, are really significant. You know, it's either a person or a place or something that was, you know, meaningful. Holding the metal of the belt buckle in my hands just reminds me that um, despite whatever limitations that I have or somebody else has, especially that's completed this, um, we can push through things. And it's, and it is, it's a physical reminder of that for me. And it's also a reminder that like BC Bike Race is no small feat to, to complete. Like it's a big deal. And that, you know, anybody that's holding that medal and holding that belt buckle in their hand should be so proud of the fact that they crossed that finish line and they finished. Um, finishing is, is the reward. That belt buckle will be the symbol of um, reaching for something absolutely, utterly impossible, ridiculous, crazy, and then saying, yeah, and I got that. That thing will be like front and center to go and affirm for me, always, always, always set for impossible. Reach, reach, reach for impossible, and do not underestimate yourself, do not. That would be the biggest part of it. It means you didn't give up on yourself when you wanted to. It means you climbed the hill when you didn't feel like it. And it means you took on the challenge when you weren't sure you were ready for it. You know, you've, you're just like, no, this is the commitment I made to myself. And you have to honor that. And then you're honoring the people that you're with too. I'm speaking to Germans, Mexicans, Spanish, Australians. I'm from Holland, the Netherlands, and he's from Germany. Called Colorado. Ecuador. I'm from Vancouver, Venezuela. Germany. In Taiwan. Fernando from Panama. Jimmy Awad, Salt Lake City. From Singapore. Singapore. Australia. Colombia. From Mexico. Guadalajara. Here. Live. And we're all speaking the same language at the end of the day. We're out here, we're all doing the same thing. I am a mountain biker. I eat pain for breakfast. My grip is unto death, and gravity is my bitch. Throat the daily grind as the clock grunts and sputters in its creeping lethargy, my mind races ahead to the trail. That's where the roots and rocks wait to rattle and shake my bones back to life, to stir my blood and lungs. I am a mountain biker. 
cables and sinews merged with blood and aluminum. My pounding heart is the relentless groove that spills across the blur of greenery. My wheels on the trail, a foot on each pedal, mind in the middle, surfing through the centrifugal force, turning the wheel that turns the tide. I am a mountain biker. I eat pain for breakfast. He is a mountain biker. Behold his panther physique. The rippling, bulging muscles propel his silhouette across the horizon, through the mossy trees, over the stumps and jagged rocks, careening past streams, cliffs, beasts, and shadows. Spandex, flesh, and metal collide in a joyful symphony of speed. The gravel flies behind his wheels, bones shadow, muscles burn, mud splatters, wheels turn. He is a mountain biker. She is a mountain biker. Her eyes shine with an earthly fire, eyes bright with electrolytes. The horizon crashes beneath her shocks. Pursed like a falcon, she swoops and dives through splendor. We are mountain bikers. We dream to ride, we dream we ride to dream. We know a triumphant smiling face is best anointed with blood, sweat and mud and washed down with a nice cold beer. We know that every revolution begins with a firmly planted foot. We know that without the pain, the ride would be meaningless, the sky less blue, the air less sweet. We are mountain bikers. Our idea of a good time is getting kicked in the crotch with a bike seat over and over again while narrowly dodging death and disaster. We know we spent too much on our bikes. We know we're just a little bit stinky. We know we're childish, obsessed, frivolous, and selfish. But when the perfect turn is accomplished and the summit crested, the ride is done, the heart is pounding, all is forgiven and all is well in the world. You are mountain bikers. You know how you are. You've come this far. Give yourselves a mighty roar.